There's an article that just, uh, it's not really all that new. It came out in January, on January 21st of, of 2020 that you might have missed. And, you know, if you don't subscribe to these publications and you, you're not like a, you're like me, you don't stay on top of things like that, that closely. But um, uh, technology news is in, or from Reuters is saying, is it an exclusive Apple drop plan for encrypting backups after FBI complained sources say, um, okay, I want you to know something about me personally. I need to get this off my chest. This device is obviously an iPhone. If you can see, you know, the, the, the damn, I mean, if I take it out of its case, it's even more obvious what it is, you know, so you can actually see the Apple logo on the back. I, I've been unwittingly and undesiredly chained to this system. I hate Apple. I always have. I never was a fan, a Macintosh fanboy. I always have. I was never, never ultimately a big fan of the Apple as a, as a company. And um, this is a hand-me-down. Um, the only reason why I have it is that it was a way to get a phone serviced, you know, and have somebody else pay for it. Which, you know, that that's why I've got an Apple phone. Um, personally, I would prefer to be on Droid, and I would probably, I'm not exactly, uh, I'm kind of on the fence between Calic OS and Graphene OS, but I would use a Droid and then just root it and put Graphene, probably, which is the option that I lean towards on the, the damn phone, because, you know, I, I just, I'm, the change that's ultimately transpired for me is that I'm more and more concerned increasingly about privacy and the fact that the, this, this little thing is, you know, a, a government honeypot and a government's dream as far as tracking is concerned does not sit well with me in any way, shape or form. I'm not happy about it. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not enthused about it, and I'm reading in droid publications that people are fleeing um, from their droids because they think that Apple is actually better privacy-wise. Uh, if you look at their uh, actual terms of service, you'll find that all the stipulations about all this stuff is that, you know, is such that Apple is a first party, and so if they if they break all the restrictions that they have, you know, on their product, they consider it fair game. Basically, they've punched giant loopholes in the Apple. Gigantic loopholes exist in the Apple actual privacy contracts that exist. And their privacy policy is punched full of holes that make exception after exception after exception carved out for Apple itself and Apple proper. Um, <laughs> so... I mean, the idea that these guys are a private, a privacy, you know, application is a bit of a joke. Um, I hate Apple. I hate the way that, I mean, I'm a, I'm a Lewis Rossman sub. I support what Lewis does. Everything from the way that in order to disassemble this, this device, I would have to go out and order a special screwdriver because they don't want people opening it so that they can see how it looks like underneath the hood to do independent repairs or to learn how to do independent repairs on these damn devices. I'm pissed about every little detail about these damn things. Um, what I see on, on, on a phone like that is a glitzy, polished prison, and I stand with Richard Stallman on this one. I'm not glad Steve, Steve Jobs is dead, but, you know... I'm glad they're gone. Apple has done nothing but course in the world and make it a worse place inherently by making their product difficult to modify and proofing it against smart people. What it has done is effectively encourage technological incompetence. That's my position. An Apple phone 
keeps you from learning how things work. It deliberately conspires to keep you ignorant and keep you dependent on them. They, they as a company, have taken over my mom's life. They've, I, I'm chained to iTunes, for instance, on Windows, because this laptop that I'm recording and bringing this to you on is a Windows laptop, and I think I would probably rather be boiled alive than do it on Mac OS. Uh, where's the Apple simplification for their programs and, and transferring and moving files between devices on Windows? Fuck Mac OS. Fuck going out out there and spending thousands of dollars on a fucking macbook that i will never use for never like never that just it will never happen uh fuck the apple file system fuck creating a proprietary method to move files back and forth between the systems i mean ntfs was proprietary originally but of course you know at least by now linux has managed to completely reverse engineer ntfs but apple file system <laughs> You know, we, we may be able to get read access to their file system um, on Linux. That that's that's the that's as much as we'll ever be able to get. And so I, I, I despise them. I despise and I find myself every single time wanting to scream, you know, eat proprietary dick when I can't do what I want to do with my own phone. So Stallman was right. You know, um, what? has happened is that you know essentially apple has conspired to take over more and more of everybody's lives and to keep them trapped in an ecosystem and a walled garden situation and i'm incredibly unhappy with with the situation i'm i could not be more pissed off about it i mean every little nook and cranny and component of this system is a raw deal uh, I, I, I sighed and am immensely sympathetic to the independent repair shop of that channel that Lewis Rossman is running. And, you know, he has my enthusiastic endorsement in this whole, you know, uh, a thing. And, a, and a, you know, a, we owe him a huge debt of gratitude for exposing what independent repairmen had to deal with on, on this front and encouraging us to get involved, you know, and and do our bit, you know, to fight for the, the, the right to repair and everything and the right to repair legislation. I'm, I'm in, in you know, and, and, and about how Apple certified repairers can't do what they need to do, you know, to make their repairs economically viable, you know, like how the process deliberately conspires against people being able to repair their stuff and the kind of way that, would really make the operation actually economically viable for people. You know, they do everything they can to screw and interfere with that process as possible. And, you know, in doing so and in doing the things that they're doing, they're, they're only encouraging people to stay stupid, stay dependent on them. I mean, I, I would have said originally that you know having an apple phone is great you know and having a curated app store is great because you know on the app store you can be sure that they aren't distributing malware because there's somebody that's actually curating the programs that come through but when i look at it for me it's only a downside because the app store okay it takes 30 percent of cut from the developers and then it enables apple to have a ultimate say over whether a program gets improved and the app store or not. And so if somebody were to say, release a torrent client on, you know, uh, on iOS, uh, Apple would have the final say and just terminate the process and say, no, we, that could potentially enable piracy. And so we don't want, you know, that app on our app store at all. And so it's, it's a, it's a completely raw deal for somebody like me. I mean, for me, it's like, you may you personally might be considered concerned about the viruses, but I'm not. I mean, I I know how to deal with that. You know, I, I I'm one of the people that isn't that isn't you know uncomfortable opening opening a computer case up and changing swapping parts out and everything and you know tinkering with and has some experience on Linux and Microsoft and you know could 
figure out a thumb drive to uninstall and reinstall operating systems and it's been using for like 20 plus years i mean i'm i'm not concerned about it, viruses and i can't help but notice everybody else is the ones that are that are get, is dealing with data breaches and you know having their data ransomed by them by ransomware companies and all this stuff but um all this would lead me and and, and my point you know that i've been ranting up here on, on the platform about for the last 10 minutes the the ultimate th- bit of information that i wanted to convey to you is that i am thoroughly disgusted with apple as a company and i could rant against the company for over two hours if you gave me that much time as if you were and i would thank you for giving me your time to unload thoroughly on this company but i think i'm i'm pretty much like i just i don't think you'll you know, continue to let me unload my incredible amount of frustration that I have on this company. I mean, my central like frustration is that iTunes is clunky bloatware and I, I, I can't move files onto my phone without Apple, you know, inserting itself in the process. And I can't do it because, you know, on top of everything else, they've created a proprietary uh, file system structure when they should have used DXT4, you know, so I can't, I can't, like, I like Androids because I can plug them directly into my computer and move files back and forth like I would a thumb drive. And I can't, I can't do that with, with this, you know, proprietary shit and shitware, you know, that Apple has, has shoved down my throat. And, you know, on top of, on top of all these particular problems like i think apple is a plague on this fucking world and in a in a huge way i think they're i think they are a blight of encouraging technological incompetence i don't care that i that i have the money to afford you know these kind of products i think there's shit you know i don't care i like i've got like 2500 bucks coming in on 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 amazon i mean what makes you think that i couldn't afford a fucking you know, Apple laptop, if I really wanted one, I just don't, I would rather be boiled alive than spend that money on that piece of shit, you know? And, 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 and so, you know, I'm in this, I'm in this terrible situation. And so like the real thing that I wanted to get at is just, you know, they, they don't tell you, you know, and even Reuters will neglect to mention this, but you can't like Apple, Originally, like Reuters left this little like it, it does kind of talk about this, but it only kind of scratches the surface, which is just that, you know, Apple did what it did and was developing an, a, a zero knowledge and, and encrypted service because of the fact that it was attempting to secure us against hackers. What you don't know is that as a hacker, a, a cracker me personally i know my way around hashcat and how to use an ocl you know uh device to to crack passwords and hashes and and everything um doing offline attacks you know if we we manage to gather a hash no matter how we manage to get it we can run it through hashcat to break it you know and to crack it and decrypt it so when when i have to to listen and I see these things, I see beyond the article itself to, you know, what's really going on, which is just, I, if I wanted to, could use my skills to hack somebody and to break into people's iCloud accounts, you know, if I ever managed to, like, if I ever breach iCloud, I would be able to get at that data, you know? myself and i i'm scaling up obviously i'm doing you know research to skill up and so the thing is you know icloud and and all these these guys apple can't weaken the encryption for the fbi without weakening it for everybody else for in such a way that not only the fbi has an easier time getting at the data but literally anybody who wants to has an easier time getting at the data i mean as long as a person is able to afford the computer components to do it, and they've got the, the technological know-how, 
all that giving the FBI easier access to our, those devices and, and to I, the iCloud will do is make it easier for somebody like me, you know, to break into people's iCloud accounts. And I'm just, I'm face palming about all this, you know, because they can't, they cannot weaken it so that it's easier for people to get at that stuff without weakening it in such a way that it makes it easier for everybody to get at it. You know, you make it easy for easier for the FBI to get at it. You make it easier for cyber criminals to get at it. You know, it's a like both happen as a consequence. And so in today's era, if you read closely and you read like cyber uh, security blogs, you will end up realizing that there are high levels, uh, like high budget state actors that are highly motivated that are trying to break in and breach systems all all over the place and highly motivated and you know they do their recon work and everything and so what i would tell you is that you you need to be worried you need to be more concerned about this kind of thing because you don't need to to worry about the fbi getting at your icloud data you need to be worried about north korea getting at it you need to be worried about russia getting at it you need to be worried about all these rogue countries that are trying to get at you can't count on them to store you know financial documents that you might need to back up on onto the iCloud you just can't you can't you can't do that with a service like that and so what i recommend is you go into your 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 phone you disable you know the storage in to the iCloud as much as possible maybe leave the medical in case you get into an accident at some point on so that like that one piece of information is available in, in case of an emergency, but just everything else, purge it out of the database and get it off your device. And, and if you're going to back it up, back it up into a service that I wreck that is end to end encrypted with a service that has zero knowledge. Now there is one downside here. You have to make sure to remember your password. Because if you forget your password, it's gone. Nobody is able to help you. The company will not be able to help you get access to your data because they don't have it because they are part of your threat model. That service is called Spider Oak. Uh, and it, it has my enthusiastic endorsement and all this as far as cloud storage is concerned. Uh, Thank you. That's been an extended rant. Um, if you want data security, you can never really be too careful. Please keep in mind that, you know, somebody like me doesn't really have a big beef with the FBI. It doesn't really have much that's worth, you know, completely going out of my way to hide from them. Not like, I would consider like the things that they might hassle with me with to be like a nuisance sort of thing. I mean, it, and not really a big deal. It's not like they would be trying to take me down for something major, you know, at the end of the day. So I'm, I'm not really as worried about the FBI as I am, you know, aware that the, the landscape has gotten more insecure and that there are like, I'm, if you wanna if you wanna know like what I'm really afraid of, I'm afraid of like North Korea, Russia, some of the other uh advanced persistent threats breaking in, you know, to our my iCloud. I, I mean it's not it's not the FBI that I'm as worried about it. Like the FBI is is in there, but it's not as high in my threat modeling as, you know, these others, you know, uh state you know actors you know because if those guys get into my data they will be rewarded by their governments you know for doing it you know they'll never be prosecuted because it's not a crime in their society they've been hired by their government to try to steal my data and hold it ransom i mean so uh spider oak is my endorsement here uh, and it's snowden's endorsement as well I, I literally use them. I just signed up for a five terabyte service. 